Hello and welcome to a video that I never ever wanted to make. I'm at a boatyard in Hertfordshire to hear the sorry tale of a woman who very much wanted to be a liverboard narrowboater and did everything absolutely by the book when buying her boat. But it's all gone horribly, horribly wrong. This is Jenny Wilkinson, standing next to what should have been her dream boat. Life afloat was something she'd aspired to for many years. My granddad originally had a boat. Um, must have been like 10 years ago, if not more. And I remember we used to take it on holidays. And then um, I remember meeting liverboards at the locks. And then I kept saying uh, to my boss, you know what, I'm going to buy a boat. And he goes, oh, my friend did it back in like the 80s. It's ever so cold, it's ever so cold. And I do it often. And then I finally had some money saved. And I was like, oh, I could actually buy or start thinking about buying a boat. I can always sell it if I don't like it. So Jenny began to look for a boat. We went to see this couple um, up in Birmingham and visited the boat, had a look around and then really liked it. Um, great size, 50 foot, cruiser stern, which was after cruiser or semi east, really. I thought I'd fall off a traditional. Um, and I thought it's great, a uh, first boat really. Uh, the price was reasonable, I thought. Came back and I gave a deposit on condition of survey. It very strongly recommended to buy the boat. The survey said that uh, there is pitting to the boat, but as long as they're pit welded, the boat would be fine, basically. And I was quite unsure because I've done so much research. I researched everything because you can see the pitting along the sides. And I was like, oh, I'm not sure when we got the boat out. And I was like, look, I need called him up and said, look, I really, I know it's this, this is bad. And he basically said, yes, it is, but it's her old boat, 30 years old. Over the time, it's still okay. I said, well, do you think it's gonna need overplate in the next few years? No, nope, no, nope. pit weld, you'll be fine. Reassured, Jenny bought the boat and spent three blissful years aboard. Lovely, the best, don't want to go back. Um, no, it was great. It was I, idyllic. I mean, anyone who's got the boat, I just you can't begin to describe, can you? You see somewhere new every two weeks. It's hard work, but it's really re rewarding. Great community. Um, any ducks to eat your bread <laughs> crumbs. Yeah, I don't know. I loved it. I really, really loved it. The time came for the boat to be blacked, as is usual, which meant it was taken out of the water. We got her out at a dry dock. So I had the guys there scrape the bottom because as the survey said, it said, this is what needs to be done. So I thought, yeah, we're going to do that. They scraped the bottom and just as I was leaving the boatyard at that point, we found a hole and um, found another hole. Oh, we found another hole, and uh, oh, oh no, okay, I've got to go though, um, and we got an emergency overplater in, and I hoped that was it. They'd found it in a very similar place, these holes, and I was like, okay, so maybe it's just like, it's lo like localised, the bad bit. And then the, um, I saw the welder who was there. He was like, mm, no, I think this all needs to be done. I was blowing through your base and I, that could be one mil. And he only managed to put two mil on the bottom. It's awful, it's so bad. And while this was going on, the boatyard pointed out something else to Jenny. The surveyor who had originally done the boat hadn't ground down the hull at all. There was no inspection point where he'd actually taken what was off to look at the hull, the condition. And that condition was bad. Generally very pitted. I was pulling flakes off. But worse, Jenny's boat couldn't stay in the dry dock. It had only been booked in for a few days blacking, so she had to move it 
even though it was leaking. We basically floated at um, eight or nine in the morning and then monitored how much water was coming in. And it, it was quite a lot first and then we're slowly like, okay, I think it's gone down and then no, no, it's coming a lot too. But it wasn't, it wasn't drastic. Like it was probably 600 litres a half hour. It was a lot, but it wasn't like, okay, we can't float, if you know what I mean. Somehow, the boat managed to stagger to this yard where it could be hauled out and left on the hard standing. A new surveyor was then instructed. He said I'd have condemned the boat if it was him. He said there's no way the surveyor should have recommended it. It should have been condemned. So surveyor says it needs completely overplating um, before you even think about putting it in the water. Oh, um, he says sell the boat. He just says get it off. It's an absolute nightmare. It's been a crushing blow to Jenny's lifetime dream. Just got the boat how I wanted it. Almost paid a small loan off that I got for it. Put, bought paint to paint the outside of the boat. Bought new solar panels to finish that off. And the last plan was to... Um, tile the fireplace and potentially change the door on my hatch. The boat being stored has given Jenny plenty of time to reflect. Kind of disappointed that I didn't go with my gut instinct with the surveyor and I listened to him really because my gut instinct was I'm not sure about this and he assured me that the boat was okay. And you go with what you th an expert in the field, don't you? Now you might well be saying, but why didn't she have insurance? And the answer is she did, but insurance is really about protecting your boat in the event of it crashing into something or it being burgled, things like that. They basically said, we can't cover you at all um, because it's something that's been an issue by the time you bought it. And I was like, I didn't know that at the time I bought it because I went with a surveyor who is a trusting document a survey and um, that's what you insured the boat on too uh, anyway fortunately last year some fluke when I was doing my insurance like do you want legal cover as well and I was like oh how much is it 10 pounds I was like you know it just covers you back a bit more so I was like yeah why not put it on so fortunately I've got le legal cover which is now going after the surveyor, so claiming against the surveyor's insurance. Um, so I don't have to do that, the insurance are doing that, but otherwise the insurance doesn't cover me at all. And as the legal process drags along, like a tortoise walking through treacle, the costs are stacking up. Just keeping it on hard standing is 250 quid a month. Um, the overplating is then 20,000 pounds. And um, then I had the emergency works, which was one and a half. The blacking itself with new anodes. So, yeah, it's um, about 30 grand. To defray some of the immense costs she's facing, Jenny set up an online shop selling products she's handmade. With Christmas around the corner, she'd be delighted if you'd take a look. Candles felt goods that are wool, so they're really like natural project products, uh, some jewelries, a collection of ideal gifts. <laughs> Ultimately, there aren't many options left. If the surveyor's money does come out, pay off, then yeah, I'll keep this, overplate it. If it doesn't, I'm just gonna have to sell, I think. Because I can't save 20 grand and also pay 250. Yeah, it's crazy. And you won't get much for it because anyone who gets it surveyed will instantly see it needs 20 grand's worth of, yeah, of work. Exactly. So you're, you're gonna get scrap value for exactly. it. Exactly, yeah.